Uh, I'm gonna go to the dentist uh, this morning, so I'm doing this early, super early. <laughs> I got up super early, so uh, I'm tired. So of course my eyes are just really squinty. Um, but there was a couple things I wanted to talk about. You know, one thing is, is I watched this movie last night and it was so good. I really, really like this movie, but I'm not gonna say the name of it because I'm gonna talk about it and I'll give spoiler alerts. But it's a ghost story, of course. I love ghost stories. Um, I love supernatural, uh, you know, movies. And, I, you know, a lot of people get scared of this stuff. But to me, it always is just confirmation. Yeah, it's out there. I know it's out there. And um, I don't know. It, it's so weird how people are so scared of everything. It's like, um, it's kind of like this imagery of these you know, cavemen waking up, coming out, and it's the first snow, <laughs> you know, and they run in the house, run in the cave, and they're scared to death. That's what it's like, you know, the humans waking up, they're just so scared of everything, you know, it's like they want to just stay cozy in their little sleepy bed, they don't want to um, think about anything, they don't want to expand their consciousness, they just want to be safe, and, uh, you know, um, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird how much that aliens and ghosts and everything you can't see has been used to manipulate people and, um, scare them. So in this movie, I love it. Cause remember the other day when I was talking about, um, you know, these TikTokers that are posting these, uh, uh, horrible ghost videos at their houses. They're all so scared. You know, look, there's really ghosts. So what's this happening? <laughs> and, all this. and I said, you know, to me, it's funny because I, I can see a grandparent sitting there opening and closing the, the drawer um, or anybody. I mean, think about it. If you are in a position where like there's ghost movies out there that show up from the, the ghost perspective and this, you know, desperate need to communicate and nobody can hear you. And you, as a spirit, are still focused on that existence. Like, even though your body's gone, you're still super focused uh, emotionally for whatever reasons. Um, and some are just coming here just to communicate, just to give information. Like, not everybody's trapped here who comes here. Like, they can come and go as they want. It's only the ones who are trapped that are, um, you know, super focused on this reality. And they don't know how to let go of it. And um, and then you have other ones that have just left energetic imprints of traumatic events. And, um, and like I said, I mean, people could be being haunted right now by people who have grown up and have moved and live somewhere else, but they went through a traumatic event and left this trapped emotional energy in there. And um, that energy is in there. And so you move in and then you've got kids who are feeding it with this angst and this, uh, you know, anger and stuff. So this energy just gets bigger and it's more trapped and there's um, more, uh, you know, what you would consider ghost activity or something. Um, you know, not all of them are just, you know, like an apparition walking around, opening and closing doors. There's, it's an energetic thing. And, uh, you know, an apparition is uh, like a one spirit, you know, that one spirit that is, you know, for whatever means, uh, you know, is in their life, they were, um, they were, uh, like I just saw one and it was, um, the, this, the gray lady of the woods. I think it's in Europe somewhere. I don't remember where it was, maybe Germany. I don't remember, but it's this long path and it is, um, trees going up over. And I guess she used to walk it all the time and she was, uh, you know, didn't have friends or anything. I can't remember what her story was, but she was very lonely and I guess she died on this path or something. But she still haunts this path, and people go and try and get pictures. The picture I saw was on, um, what is that called? Canned ham? No. The show is, um, something ham. It's not canned ham. But it's got a little pig. It's his little thing. But the, um, 
he always does like spooky stories, like ghost pictures. I saw one and it was really, really cool. Like the pictures were really, really cool. Um, where it's like, I don't see how people could not say that's some sort of apparition. One of them, there was a, um, a grandma who was holding her new grandchild and in the mirror reflection behind her, you could see two apparitions standing over it. And they were trying to figure out like who this was. Well, to me, it's more than likely a grandparent or some kind of person who has a, a emotional attachment still to this life in this family that they are observing and still feel a part of. They're still connected and you can be connected still even after death. And like I've talked about so many times, you know, that they're constantly coming back and communicating. And the more you open yourself up to that communication, the more that you will get the messages that they're bringing to you. And so if you think about, you know, this drawer opening and closing, like they're frustrated, like, how do I get to you? <laughs> you know, like, are you listening? How can I get you to listen? How can I get you to pay attention? I'm right here. And, um, but people get so scared, like, oh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Well, if you sit down and you communicate, you can ha communicate with these spirits. You can ask them, like, what do you want? Who are you? Why are you here? And uh, you'll get something in your head. You'll get a response. And, you know, but it can be different for everybody. It could be a knowing. It could be a hearing. You hear something. It could be a visual. It could be a lot of different things. It all depends on your own consciousness, how you perceive the world. And so um, if you sit down and you ask them, and you can also tell them to leave. If it's something, you know, uh, some some spirit that you feel is dark or whatever. You know, there's some spirits too, like uh, that Thomas guy, the guy, I, I like him too, that he, um, he goes around and just talks to people. He does this, um, I don't know, the gimmicky part is the, he picks people up in the car and then gives them reading of who else got in the car with them. And he's just so spot on. Like it would have to be very set up, but the emotions that these people show, then, you know, I mean, they'd have to be, uh, Academy Award winning actors are just like nobody I've ever heard of. So if they're actors, they're really damn good. So, um, anyways, if they're trying to communicate with you, they're trying to bring messages. So if you sit down and you quiet your mind and you communicate and you feel powerful enough that you can, if it's some kind of spirit that you don't feel easy with, you can tell them to leave and they have to leave. You can command your, um, domain, you, you can clear those energies out. You know, when I'm clearing energy or transmuting energy, then it will be, if it's not here for my, um, for my learning, for, um, for positive, you know, that's, that's where I lean to, you know, if, if there's a lot of, um, trapped energy in my house, like, uh, things keep falling, like last night, just it was so much different noises and I really should probably do a little clearing but I don't get really um too scared I mean when the noise happens you know you always look over like what was that but I don't um I don't feel like oh there's creepy ghosts around my house that are gonna you know kill me while I sleep and that's what a lot of people have in their heads like that these are dangerous they're gonna hurt you well how does that how's a ghost gonna hurt you it doesn't even have hands, you know, it, it has to do it in your mind. It's all in your mind. That is your consciousness. That is, it's like the, you gotta, like, you gotta get um, everyone to understand, like, what is this experience is about, you know? And it's your consciousness is having an experience in a three-dimensional world. So your consciousness has developed this, um, you know, this uh, three-dimensional experience and used the matter to create a being so that you could have this experience. But other apparitions and stuff like that, they don't have a body. So how are they gonna hurt a body? Like, you, you know, just use your logic. Yeah, okay, so they can open and close doors or open and close drawers, you know, throw spoons or whatever. But, 
you know, your consciousness, um, you know, use your consciousness to, well, to communicate, to remove, to whatever. But, you know, that is, um, that is the only way that they could go in and it attack you really is in your head and make you feel like it's really happening because it's, it's the same thing as like when you have a dream and it feels so real because those experiences are really real. And, um, so it can feel super real, but there's no reason, uh, um, for you to fear, uh, ghosts and stuff. I mean, it is, it is silly and I can't believe how many of these shows I watch and people are just terrified, terrified of ghosts and uh, aliens. And it's just so silly. Um, anyways, in this movie, I loved it because um, I kind of want to just tell the whole thing. I don't want to, I'm sorry if I spoil it for somebody, but I loved how, you know, this, uh, this, couple that loved each other and they had a child they finally get married and then uh their child dies and they blame each other so they have to split up and they go on with their life and the woman goes off and does her thing and the man goes off and does his he still has their house and he's renting it he had tried to sell it but maybe he just couldn't at first and so now he's uh, just renting it but renters won't stay in it and so, um, you know, he just thinks, you know, renters are so irresponsible. So he goes to clean it up. It's a giant mess. Like these people just freaked out and left. There's lights broken. There's all sorts of stuff. And um, so he starts, you know, cleaning it up and stuff. And then um, all of a sudden his son comes and starts talking to him. And, you know, this guy just freaks out. And, uh so then his son wants the mom to come back. So, you know, goes to go through all this and gets the mom to come back and stuff. And the parents start uh, talking again, start falling back in love again and stuff like that. And so, you know, and the son hasn't said why he's there, but the son is even able to leave the house. He's not trapped. The spirit isn't trapped. And then she sees her mom come in and start, you know, trying to communicate. And her mom's like yelling and yelling and yelling. And she can't um, hear, and she's trying to hear, but she can't. And then, um, you know, so you think like, well, is the, the child come to try and get his parents back together or whatever? But then, um, you know, it has a turn and um, ends up leaving uh, the dad by himself, but he also is by he's met the woman next door and he's been spending time with their son who was a little bit older than, uh, he might've been the same age when theirs died. I don't know how old this kid was, but he was a young boy. And so this soul, the dad, even with all his loss, this is, this is the beauty of a soul's life. And when you experience loss. So even when this guy had such tremendous loss, he has a choice. He can choose to go in and suffer in pain. Just, you know, spend the rest of his life suffering in pain. He had this beautiful, beautiful opportunity to change things around before the end. And he um, used it and created beautiful memories for himself. And, uh, you know, really wonderful times. And, um, and then, you know, you could go into this and just be this extreme loss, you know, how will I ever go on? I had, everything was so perfect and just, um, you know, extreme pain and stuff, but you are given these blessings of these people who have come. You had this opportunity to make new memories with these people, to uh, give blessings to these people, to pass on the love that you wanted to give to them, to these people, you know, like that's how your soul works. So you think your soul has this opportunity for this new thing. So, you know, he was still alive and he could feel like, you know, like, why, why, what is the point? Why am I here? Why do I must suffer like this? But his soul had another part to its mission. And you don't even know what that mission is until hindsight, till when you can look back, but you have to just follow the trail that's laid out for you, you know, because if you pay attention, 
there is a trail that is there for you to a path to follow and that path it, you can choose you can choose to feel pain or you can choose to feel joy and in that path of joy you can create so much happiness for yourself so much fulfillment and you can make those years so productive and so magical and you can leave a legacy so you don't have to stop when other things end for you you know and it can feel like such a, a extreme loss to lose so much but it is you know and you're you'll have to feel the pain you know you have to go through the process of grief to get to the point but but life still has so much beauty left for you to go out and experience and I just think, you know, especially, I mean, as horrible as it is, we're about to go into a time that's going to be extreme loss for a lot of people. Like a lot of us are going to have um, some painful times ahead of us. And um, it's going to be hard and sad. I told you just, you know, thinking about Stella leaving me, just, you know, a ball my head off like a little freaking baby and all that pain of loss that comes back up and all of the every fiber in my being is like I don't want to feel pain again I don't want to feel loss but you know we have to <clears throat> choose when these things happen that is how we build our soul up you know that is how we build resilience so we build love we build our own safety net you know to know that even when something happens that we don't understand, that there's a, a good reason for it, you know? And uh, like I was saying, like right now, so many people have protective walls around themselves. They've got their soul caged in a little box. They've got their whole world boxed up. And, um, you know, and they've put barriers around them. They've used these different um, things that, you know, we knew would lead to not a productive way of living. You know, if you have everybody strung out on drugs and dying and you got moms that taking care of babies, dads in jail, and you know, everybody's turning to pornography and alcohol and uh, a, I don't know, divorce court. And I mean, we've just got like this whole system of just struggle and, um, everyone's feeling like a failure and just like, why does nothing work for me? Why do I just keep, you know, hitting my head up against the wall? And it is all just to slow down, slow down, step back and work on your own health and work on your own, um, your own self-esteem, your own healing and stuff. And then things start just lining up naturally. It just goes in a natural thing. The reason why stuff feels so chaotic is because you're not taking the time for yourself to heal. And you're just trying to, uh, you know, uh, navigate life on autopilot, not healing. It's a reactive way, you know. It's not a good way to um, interact with people. It's not healthy for any of us. So the more that we all work on our own selves, the more we make this a better place for everyone else. And, um, you know, if you've got some ghosts around your house that are trying to communicate with you, <clears throat> don't get scared, you know, sit down and listen. I mean, it has been so ridiculous. Like even in this show, they have a, a, a medium come. The, people, the renters, I don't know if you can hear my stomach growl, it's going crazy. Um, the renters who had moved out had contacted a medium. And so the medium comes and the medium is, you know, the guy wants to keep his son there. And the medium's like, oh no, he's from the dead world. You cannot have the dead with the live and blah, 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 blah. You know, bullshit. It is bullshit. You, uh, you know, it, it, all this stuff where, oh, we have to use a Ouija board and Ouija boards are dangerous and stuff like that. Um, they're all around you. You don't have to use anything, but sit down and just quiet your mind and ask questions and listen to the answers. And then you've got to, you know, if you feel like, <clears throat> oh, these are just coming from inside my head, ask some different questions. Ask where something is that you lost. Ask uh, something, you know, that you don't know. And then see what the answer is, you know. That's when you'll start seeing. I mean, I get answers all the time. I don't know this stuff, so 
you know, it's coming from somewhere outside of me. And um, there's some more stuff I want to talk about, but I'm going to just keep going. So I'll just be right back.